Hi, this is Chantal from the Purring Cat Studio and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am playing with uh, my digital papers. I have printed them on cardstock because the idea is I want to create a big tag with a tag attached to it and then another little tag. In other words, we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, just grab your beautiful papers. Um, they don't need to be double sided at all and you will see why so I did not print on both sides um, These are all my own digitals that I've printed a little smaller I'll explain the process in a few when we go uh, and start creating So if you want to see what I come up with how about we meet each other on the other side of the intro? <music> Okay, so um, I will show you this tag. Now, of course, I've printed my digital many times, different sizes. And I also wanted to mention something that I didn't, you know, take the time to mention in uh, the intro because it would have been too long of an intro. Um, so let's start by showing you what I've done. So <clears throat> as you may or may not know, since yesterday, <laughs> I got a um, sewing machine so of course I sewed all around I'm not very good as you can see it's not straight <laughs> but it doesn't matter I still love the look and if you don't have a sewing machine no worries as usual glue will do and you can also hand stitch on maybe just one side or all around if you're very patient and very good at it whatever you decide to do it will look perfect it doesn't matter um, I just use the sewing machine because of course <laughs> I want to play with my new toy um, so and I also I was always jealous of other people <laughs> and the finish it gave their work okay so this is the tag I want us to make together like so and it's easy the process is not difficult now this might look like it's holding by this but it's not I'll show you how I made it hold to the uh, to the other tag um, it's really really easy it's a lot of fun and I didn't want to make something complicated today so I hope you'll join me so grab your beautiful papers uh, what I could suggest if you want to prep your work of course pause the video go prep your work come back <laughs> If you want to craft with me um, it's simply to pre-cut your um, tags now what I've done and this is where we get into the how to section of the video so we'll put this aside okay so like I said I of course printed many times see that's the same paper I just use in a different size um, I have this little beauty I haven't used yet I really really love it so <clears throat> the thing I've discovered is in the I don't know if you noticed but in the intro you you will see like this let's say and a lot of white space that's because at first I printed and I set the photo setting on my printer um, to different sizes like 8 by 10 5 by 7 4 by 6 and that wastes a lot of papers on the border and I didn't like that so between the end the intro and me finishing up this big tag that I wanted to use you know as a reference and to show you what I've done I realized something you know when you purchase digital papers at least mine and I'm fairly certain most of the digital papers they come in a, a JPEG format and what you can do with that is I work with Google so I opened a Google document I'm fairly certain it would be the same thing if you did you know what while I do this I'm gonna start just give me a second look so real quick I printed my or this is an original page eight and a half by eleven I'll continue my story after um, and I printed it I cut it and now I'm, I'm I folded it in half and I'm gonna make the tag so now I'm gonna keep talking so what I've done is I don't know if you use Google but I'm sure it would work with uh, Word <clears throat> I work with uh, Google Docs right now and what I've done is simply open a document and then it's um, insert and insert the digital papers so I inserted this 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 
and they're all part of the same i think it's called fresh vintage paper i think i think i'm not 100 percent sure in my etsy shop but you'll see the pictures and this is like usually eight and a half by eleven this is usually eight and a half by eleven this is usually eight and a half by eleven but because i opened a document like in word or in google doc and i said um insert and then i looked in my computer for my digital papers and i inserted this page and then i inserted this page and then because they're jpeg uh, jpeg images you click and you reduce them so i was able to print multiple images on an eight and a half by eleven a lot less waste of paper of course and i must say they look so cute in a smaller size this is this is really lovely i love 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 it and um and so that's what i did and i also have a page and i think in this digital set of all kinds of pick numbers like this and i think um stamps and such so i printed those as well and the same thing i copied the, the the jpeg i inserted the jpeg in my document and then i clicked on the square and then i resized so i was able to put multiple stuff on one page until i found the size was perfect for what i needed so that is what i wanted to explain <laughs> so i don't know if if my explanation is clear i hope because it's really okay i'm trying to make sure that when i cut this the angle i don't cut off his beak he's probably gonna have some stitching on it but at least it won't be cut off <laughs> so i hope my explanations are simple enough and um that's how i made miniatures if you will of my digital pages so yeah like this was much bigger it, it is part of you know <clears throat> things like that and these are usually about this size so i really reduced everything but i was just i, I can't believe i never thought of this before you know so i can first of all not waste paper and second have smaller versions of my paper so you can do it too because if you purchase my papers like i said the the digital files will be delivered to you in your computer by jpeg so you just insert the pages and there you go so i'm going to ink this right now and i've chosen a different color um, this one is frayed burlap and the reason is i haven't used it in so so long and i'm realizing that the color is really beautiful it's brown it's dark enough but it's not as dark as espresso and whatever walnut i think is the one i've been using a lot lately so i thought you know what and i think i'm going to purchase a much lighter one even i love the dark but i'm thinking for this kind of paper it's better that it's lighter so yeah so this is just a relaxing you know crafting session and i'm just doing the same that i've done on the bigger one but in a smaller version because i have journals of all you know sizes um i was thinking though <laughs> um while i was you know prepping and um you know getting to show finishing up the big tag so i could show you that i'm realizing <clears throat> i need to sell stuff <laughs> i have all these beautiful mini journals every craft that i make with you and show you are still here because i have no time to take pictures and put them on etsy so yeah <laughs> this is uh this is becoming a problem because my studio is now filled with all kinds of tiny little, you know, whether it's tags like these or my pocket tags or my clear tags or 
all these beautiful the envelope journal i made it's so beautiful i love it so much um and it's just sitting there so while i'm doing this i was thinking if by any chance you would like to purchase one of them because you've seen you know you've seen me um craft you you've seen me make them is what i'm trying to say here yeah. it's like i've lost english <laughs> um wait i just want to make sure of something so yes when you open it it will be this but when you close it it will be maybe a little too far because these are smaller there there you go that's what i want okay perfect so as you as you saw i folded the paper in half and then i trimmed to make a tag so now i will open like so and we will glue a piece of fabric between those i will just grab a piece here there you go and some glue um i'll put the glue on here that way i know it's everywhere on the fabric okay hmm maybe more in the middle like so now you can decide if you want this tag to be here at the bottom I will put it in the bottom because I want to see the bird he's so cute so Wait now, I just want to see something though. Will it really, if I don't put it in the middle. Oh, I kind of like it. Not, like not even with the bottom. The other one I did, I, I put it even. I don't know. Well, let's not dwell on it too long because I don't think it matters much. Okay, I'll put it even again. There we go. Okay here like so okay so leave a tiny little gap I'm sure you see this let me see in the camera yes you do just a tiny tiny gap it just makes the folding that much smoother okay like so there okay now you can <clears throat> glue the rest of your tag there's a little bit too much blob of glue <laughs> uh, I don't want it to come out of the tag and glue everything else there we go Perfect, lovely. Okay, and same thing on the other side. Just want to make sure that when I close the, the tag, it doesn't spill out. So. This little piece of fabric there is just wanting to get inside, but I kind of like that it stays out. There. Perfect. Oh, beautiful. I'm just going to get rid of the excess glue. <laughs> there. Okay. So this is the first step. Even if you want to sew around, I would... I wouldn't you know you need to have the, the tags open so you can glue them like such because look how easy it the movement is amazing um, for those of you who are not new to my channel you could also have simply done a tab binding um, you let, let me let me show you real quick so let's pretend we're working with this one you could have closed your first tag let's say this is a little small but let's say this tag is bigger you could have left the tag open on one side 
put a tab binding between them because it just adds beauty anyways right it could be a a stamped and a stained piece of fabric like so right here it would look fabulous and then you would have an opening here where you could add a little secret add a tiny piece of uh, paper now this is too small it would have to be bigger but i think you know what i mean so if you don't want to buy to you know bind them this way you can always use the method i just showed you so if this was the side the side one you could bind them with a piece of cloth on each side like here and behind and leave this side of the tag open and slide in some journaling cards and such so it's just another option I wanted to do it this way because I don't know I just felt like it I usually leave a lot of openings everywhere to put stuff but today I didn't feel like it so the next step um, in this would be if you are planning on sewing around would be to go ahead and do this just that now if you don't have a sewing machine let me just show you with a piece of paper a piece of scrap paper here okay so you can glue and just like we've done right now this looks beautiful there's nothing wrong with that but I've done this before where all I've done was I mean, I'm not doing it right because, of course, I want to show you. <laughs> Let me do better. Oh, my son is starting practicing his piano. He loves to play. I can hear it. I can hear him. There you go. So, once, let's say this was here, um, in the end, it would look like stitching. And I've done this before, and it worked perfectly and you could also have like there's colored sharpies you could have like uh, or um, markers um, with a fine point and instead of the harsh black you could try brown which reminds me that's another thing I wanted to add today the thread maybe you don't see it on camera but it's not black I decided to go with brown I thought the it was much softer and it just felt like it it matched what I wanted to do today a little better, right? So I, I was, I felt, I don't know, brighter and softer today. <laughs> um, I compared to the last video, which was this, which is really beautiful, but the stitching is black, but it fits the overall look, right? Because it's, everything is a lot darker. And so, brown would not have worked for, for this i think black was the way to go for the stitching on this but today i felt a little softer okay so enough chatting i will go and sew around this wish me luck because this is very small and i'm not very agile <laughs> with my sewing machine just yet and i'll be right back okay so um i stitched around the tags I've had a few mishaps, like um, I know this is not straight, <laughs> um, but also my thread broke a few times. Uh, the tension was not very strong, actually it was the same tension I had all along for the other ones, but I did change the color of the thread, so maybe the brown one is not as solid as the black one was, so anyways, it doesn't matter, I don't think that it really makes a big difference meaning I I still think it adds a lot of vintage feel and I just love it so before I put the other one I just wanted to show you how I did this so I just uh, punched holes in this paper that I have so paper bag would be the same it's craft it looks vintage um, I inked the edges of the circle yes even the small ones <laughs> it doesn't show but I know I did see oops there you go <laughs> um, <clears throat> so what I do whoops is I glue one I punch a hole and then I glue the other because I can kind of center the other one with the light that the hole makes through the paper so that's exactly what I've done see I've put the first circle now I will punch a hole in the middle 
so I took a smaller one here because the tag is a lot smaller there you go and now it'll be a lot easier for me to line up this one in the middle whoops that's a lot of glue well, glue will also help <laughs> but what I mean is well I don't know oh, you kind of see that on the camera don't you you see the hole you can see the light see I blocked the light the light is back so that's what I mean by trying to put it in the middle as much as possible because then you'll go right ahead and punch another hole and you want it to be as much in the middle as possible I don't think this is super in the middle because I moved it as I was talking but it'll be okay so I will punch again in the same spot I did before there you go perfect now we'll go put my eyelid and I'll be right back there we go so now we have the other eyelid I put it upside down I should have put the front here because that's the flap that you know folds um, actually I could also do this but now this one would be reverse um, it doesn't really matter because there's always ribbons and such so it kind of hides everything but I'm now trying to see which side I want front because this is actually pretty nice I like to see the um, ruler hmm I am liking this why not do it on this side I'm wondering so this would be our back well I will think about it while I get things to decorate okay so I dug in my dried flowers and there's a picture of flowers on this tag and I thought I don't know it's I like to put the real ones on top why not and I'm trying to see what kind of arrangement I can make um, I don't know if any of you have seen the video where I show how to press flowers because I did get myself a flower press earlier in the summer um, and now with fall coming I really <laughs> need to start using it more um, I think I need new and smaller nozzle for my glue thing let me just get that okay so I just I have this bottle usually with the kind of a big nozzle I just took one other bottle with a smaller one I find that the glue distribution is an issue for me <laughs> okay so let's glue this flower now if you don't have those and you want to kind of do the same design of course you can always use fussy cut I think that would actually add a nice pop but I didn't have any fussy cut flowers so I'm using these there's also stickers plus I mean I'm using my papers my digital papers so maybe you're using another another kind of paper and instead of I don't know flowers maybe you have butterflies or whatever it is that you're using okay go now the in my description box the list of things I use is getting bigger and bigger <laughs> every time but that's normal because as I'm crafting I'm listing things that I use because you ask me these questions where did you get that what kind of bottle what you know so more and more the description box is getting bigger because it might not be items that I've used in that particular video but I just add and add more every time so I think these would look good just like that I don't know or is it too much this is kind of nice like that too maybe I could add something in the bottom I'm not sure of what I would like hmm let me see I don't know 
I like this. This is a piece, I'll show you how I did it later because I, I'm probably going to use it for the, um, the rope, if you will. But I would like to use a tiny piece here. Hmm. Oh, I like this side with the numbers. Oh, look at that. I can't make it really like a pocket. I usually would, but if I put something here, then you hide all the flowers. So I do think this looks absolutely cute at the bottom, just like that. Or, hmm. Oh, now see, that is also very nice, but I'm gonna do something else. I wanna stick with the idea there. Okay, so I will cut this, the excess. Like so, just a tiny little cut and then we rip. That's all it takes. Oh, it would have been nice had I thought of it. I could have sewn it in. Hmm, but it looks good like that too. Yes, I'm going to leave it this way and now I'm going to glue it. Yeah, I would really be tempted to make a little tuck space with it but I don't want to hide the rest of the pocket I think it's uh, the pocket <laughs> the tag I think it's just way too cute and vintage oh my goodness look isn't it cute I know I know my stitching is not great I am fully aware of this <laughs> I'll do better I promise I just need practice um hmm I have these um, ropes. They're huh, hand cord. I had no idea. I think it would look nice here. Or maybe, oh, I think this would look even better for this particular tag. And it will hide the fact that I kind of punched it the wrong way. Well, the wrong way. It's supposed to look pretty good on each side, but you know what I mean. There's there's the front of a of an eyelet in the back, and this just so happens that it's in the back, even though this is in the front. So yesterday I was yesterday, yeah. My video ended in the middle last night, and now we're the next day. Um, because I was tired and I realized, oh, you know what? I kind of need to sleep. <laughs> so what I meant was for you it's today but yesterday I stopped the video thinking that maybe this would be the front because it is beautiful just this way as well but then I I just came back to this side why not oh. okay it's a little less noisy now I had my uh, my washer on the doors closed but it's loud I can still hear it and it's a new it's new appliances from I don't know less than a year but they're still noisy Oh my goodness, look at that. I hope you you think it's pretty because I I just love it so much. So so much. Okay, I'm thinking of adding something here. Let me see what I've got. Mm. Something small. Um let me see. I thought I had like little a pumpkin that's a little rose now if you can see that oh that does look good you know it's with the theme of flowers and that's what is this a little girl yeah a turtle no nah, not really mm. I think this, the one I picked is the one I'm supposed to put there, I think. Okay, perfect. Okay. Oh, the wrong thing. <laughs> That's not what I need. Oh, cute. 
Okay, this is nice. Now we have to decorate the rest of this tag. <laughs> I think here I will also, well, I will show you how to do the, um, well, exactly this. This is really beautiful and easy. So I will put this aside so I don't spray on it. Okay. Okay, so this is turning into another little tutorial real quick um karen i know you've been asking to see how i stamp on fabric there's really no magic trick here it is so easy peasy and simple so let me show you quickly um okay let me take a few i have my favorite stamps now i just ordered tim holtz um one of his series of stamps oh my goodness i can't wait to have them like i shouldn't be purchasing all these things i really don't have <laughs> the financial you know i shouldn't let's just say i shouldn't but fall is at our door soon i mean not soon it's still summer but you know what i mean and i'll be less at the campground on weekends i mean i will be up until the first week of October that's when the campground like closes and it's also my birthday and we usually go for that last weekend and then we bring the trailer back home but um, there's some weekends I plan on jumping if I can or if the weather's not good something like that right because it's get it gets really really tiring for me because I do work a full-time job and then I come home and do all the mom things and then I come down in the studio in the last hour and a half that I can be awake and then I do this so I, I love crafting and I wish I could just do that but I can't uh, if you see the number of uh, uh, subscribers I've had I have I am not there yet <laughs> it takes a tiny bit more <laughs> oh. I look at all these um, crafters that have like 30,000 subscribers I'm thinking oh my goodness how am I ever going to get to that point you know but it's sharing the videos it's liking the videos it's you know it takes time i mean we're not i'm not here creating viral videos with uh crazy stunts and such right all i'm doing is in my studio doing little crafts that bring i hope joy <laughs> so they take longer but when you do share my videos on your social media it really helps because the more people is you know see it and say oh look at that she makes nice things let me subscribe well it helps a lot and I want to I want to be here for a long time I'm not here just to do quick videos and disappear I really really love this and as you can see I'm investing a lot of, of my time and money into getting more items like the sewing machine and you know new stamps and you know this as well as I do nothing is cheap so you know I'm just chit chatting here while I'm while I'm uh, stamping <laughs> oh, I'm not complaining don't get me wrong I'm just letting you know how things are and what it takes to be a crafter on YouTube you know I don't have any sponsors I don't know how to get them really I know you're supposed to take the time to write to companies and see if they want to sponsor you, but like I said, I barely have time to do what I'm doing now, so <laughs> if there's a company out there that sees my crafts and say, oh, i like to help her out, please do. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's in this video or the other I just finished, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. I usually blame it on... You know age but I'm not that old yet so <laughs> you listen I've been losing my mind for a while now. <laughs> um, but I do have a wish list that I posted now on 
in my description box. It's my Amazon wish list. People have requested it, and you know what? Why not? Why not? Maybe there's somebody that has products there or makes stamps that wants to sponsor me or... Um, I mean, for products, I'm jumping from one thing to the other. But for Amazon wish list, uh, some people have requested it because they wanted to send me things, but they didn't know what to send me. So I appreciate it so much. You never have to, of course. But uh, we all need sometimes a little help. So why not? Right? I'm no different. Okay, I think that's enough stamping for now. Uh, wait, maybe I'll put some more here. How about... Mm, I usually do the flowers in black, but why not? I have other colors I never use. Mm, pistachio? Why not? Worst thing? What? what worst thing that could happen? It won't be successful. It won't show up enough, and that's fine. We won't know until we try. I love these little memento. Because this is a big piece, I will do the reverse with a big piece, meaning the stamp is big. So <clears throat> I will put it down and put the fabric over it. And then I'll just go with my, you know, press like this. Because if you try and press down with the big stamp, I find that depending on what surface you are, mine is a, a like, like a... I don't know, a work surface made out of wood on top of a table. So the work surface, the wood, tends to bend down, bow down when I press too hard. And then the middle of the stamp usually doesn't show. But the way I'm doing it right now, as you can see, it's stamped through. Oh, look at that. It does show the green I like. Oh, I should have done this before with that color. See, I don't always use everything I have because I kind of forget. Oops, oops, oops. You don't see this, but... Oh, I'm in such a need of decluttering yet again. It doesn't take long, huh? It doesn't take long that things just get really messy. Okay, so this starting started by being a video about um, making tags. And now I'm into um, stamping on fabric. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Ah, there, I'm gonna take these few. We're gonna end right here in this corner. I'm just grabbing random stuff. I'm going to need. Ah, where is it? Oh my goodness, seriously. This is why I said I need to declutter because. And I'm sure I'm not the only one, you can let me know, but I start, let's say, crafting. And then I'll have like a piece of paper that I'm going to keep for, you know, next craft session. So I don't know where to put it, so I'll just chuck it somewhere. And then I do the same with something else and so on and so on. First thing you know, I have a lot of, uh, no, not this. I have a lot of all kinds laying around everywhere little pieces of papers, a little chunk of this, a little, yeah. And then I just put them in a bunch somewhere here, there, and everywhere. And that's not good. Because every time I'm trying to grab something, everything falls. So, I'm just stamping different. These would be for little pieces, you know, that I... Mm, why not? Little pieces of cloth that I will eventually just grab, cut, rip. <laughs> um, how about this light blue? And maybe red. There, that's all. That will be nice. If it's not, well, like I said, it will be used somehow. There. It is nice. Okay. So, 
I will put these away real quick. And then, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have a lot of editing to do in this video, I feel. Okay, so the next step that we want to, we want to do on our fabric, a lot of times I've just stamped and I used it like that and ripped <clears throat> pieces of um, the cloth to do all kinds of things, like my little tab binding that I do. But this time, I want to also spritz some color. So, for those of you watching, I just got these uh, Distress Oxide. I don't know what to do with them. I honestly don't. I think it would be better if I could spray them with water, but actually, last time I think I used this, which was Distress... Uh, distress spray stain mixed with water so I think I'm going to use this this I will read a little more on how to use them right now I've just used them however I felt but I also want to see what they're supposed to be used for so I'm just going to spray random spots here and this is already mixed with water but I will use a tiny bit of the oxide with water and then I'll I'll show you real quick. So what I do or what I've done is sprayed and then took my water bottle, sprayed, and then just with a paper, I'll just just like that, just you know, move it around a tiny bit. And all of a sudden it looks really like coffee stained or something, right? And then some water. And then I'll use my dryer. To dry it all off there tiny bit here some more water and all of a sudden this looks like it's all coffee stained I went a little dark with this one but you could go you know lighter up obviously so I will dry it and I'll come right back and rip it and then we'll use it as a um, like a ribbon for our tags because we let's remember that's what I was supposed to be doing <laughs> okay so I will rip a piece to make the ribbon if you will so I don't know maybe I'll cut like so and there there we go Oh, I forgot to color the oh no it still shows and actually will bring some kind of lightness because I did go a little dark yeah so I always pull some of the you know I like it to look like really really old okay so let's put that in so that was a big detour I hope you don't mind it <laughs> ah. So I don't know if Karen, my be my beautiful viewer, you've asked that question and you've asked it in the last comments of, I don't know, two videos ago, I think. So I hope this helps you to know how to do this. I think, I think this is still a tiny too, bit too light. Let me just give it a tiny baby spritz. There you go. Just a tiny bit. There. Okay. So we got this going. So I, I hope you are liking where this is going so far, and I also hope that you, you know, create as well. So now, the other fun part, of course, is I have no idea what I'm going to do in the back here. Um, in on the other tag, what did I do? I think. Oops, where's my tag? Oh yes, I made a little pocket with a piece of ephemera from one of my digital sets. I think it's the same of all of, as all these papers. That's what I want to say. I'm unsure though. Um, hmm. Oh, I kind of like that. That could be a nice little tuck spot. And then, so we don't hide this, we could easily put something that is thin and only on this side. Now, not this, because it's too much of the same. But you know what I mean. Oh, I like this too. But it's a little big. 
maybe a corner tuck oh i love this this is from pink monarch prince i love her papers I'm trying to see if it would no it hides too much of the bird i will need something small here as well and it doesn't have to be tucks i'm just you know i just really love to put a lot of tuck space spots and surprises everywhere and oh wait i have a butterfly here i really like Oh, he would look nice there, I think. Yes, I'm going to glue him right here, I think. Let me think. <laughs> uh, I do like him. Yeah, I like him. He's going there. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Pink Monarch Prince is someone I purchased a lot of digitals from. Um, who else? Uh, well, I make my own now, so I buy a tiny bit less. Um, plus, I don't want to get my mind tinted by what they're doing. I want to I wanna keep developing my own style. I mean, of course, I'm influenced by, you know, like Tim Holtz and, of course, Pink Monarch Prince are my two favorites. Um... But I am still trying to develop my own style. I also love Marta's paper from Marimi Small Small Art. I love her style. It's different from mine, which is why I think I love it so much. Ooh, how about something like this? And maybe just something like this. Oh, perfect. I think I love it. I love it. I do. Okay, let me just cut the excess. Not everything has to be a tuck spot, right? I have this tendency of wanting to add, you know, tuck spots. And actually, <laughs> hold on. Mm. You know what? This will be a tuck spot. <laughs> oh my gosh, send help. Hold on. <laughs> I like it. I want surprises and I'm, I'm doing it. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of this in the bottom like so like yes yes okay bear with me while I add of course more tuck spots ah I just love it I can't help myself okay wait where do I want it to um yeah just corner how about that a corner tuck there and some cheesecloth, of course, first, like so. That will come out of the tag, just like that. I mean, there were beautiful designs here with the airline ticket and such, but I need a corner tuck there. And I find the colors go well with the butterfly and the ruler. I think everything matches beautifully. So what are we going to put in that little corner tuck? Let me see what I have. I have all kinds of beautiful ephemera that I could put. I don't want it to be too big because it is a tiny little tuck spot. See, this is beautiful, but it's too big. I want something small. Um, hmm. Oh, I'm seeing this. This this is a nice sticker. I'll keep that aside. Oh, that's also nice. Maybe for the other side of our tag. Um, oh, nice fussy cut butterfly. Um, <laughs> okay, not this one. These are too big. I need to add little surprises. Tiny thing. Hmm. If I cut this in half, then it would be the, the right size. Let me see. Might be a little too wide. Oops. Hmm. Wait now. Yeah, but it kind of, Huh. It hides this. But... It's really nice. I like the green. Or do I like this? I like both. I 
think I'll stick with this and we need to add something else maybe a little a nice little um, faux stamp that's one that came from my kit so it's not too big and it allows oh, or maybe this one it's vertical oh yes 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 I'm still not sure about this um, are you like me you go through your stuff and dwell on them and it takes forever just to choose the final touch you know what it's okay it's because we care I don't dislike this I'll put it aside you know we get distracted by all the pretty the pretty things right and it's okay Ooh, I kind of like that it's a it's a sticker right but I like like I said the reason I do these tuck spots and such is to give surprises I like that the person will have elements to play with so I have to stop because I can't keep dwelling on what I will put so <laughs> I think I will just I don't know if this would fit this way Ooh. okay I like that I'm going to leave these two there I can't keep like I said dwelling on what I'm going to put in the little tuck spot because first I could add something later and second we got to keep uh, moving <laughs> So as I said, I found these. I found these while I was, you know, going through my stuff. I like, I like them. Just want to see which one I want to put where, or if any. Sometimes I don't know which way things go. Oh, I think this way. Hmm, it hides a tiny bit too much. I like that, but. That's not bad. I could cut it like so. Yes, why not? Why not? I have also all kinds of clear um, stickers with flowers and such, but I don't know. I think these are nice too. I put it over the stitching because I don't know I thought it looked better if the cut part was right at the bottom of the tag oh I like that it's really good I would like to add something here like something that dangles of some sort maybe just keep it simple and grab a number on a bullpen Let me grab one of these. I might add something. Add, add, add. <laughs> Seems it's the only word I know. Let's add something. Uh, like just a random number like that, I think, is really lovely. I like it. I find that sometimes if you don't put it the right way yes perfect I don't know but I think that I'm just realizing that the number and the fact that there's numbers here just makes it all I don't know cohesive is I think it's the word and how about hmm, we add oh wait now these yes I didn't put them anywhere perfect so these are also part of I think the same kit as this and they were meant for you to rip them right so which one do I want to use it all goes with the numbers why not oh I like this this one so I made them for you to just rip them that's why a lot of them already have rips you can just follow them so, of course, you can always stamp numbers on a piece of paper that you like, but I don't really have number stamps a whole lot. I do, but I mean, they're big and you can't have everything. So, this was my way to give you the opportunity to have numbers. 
on already, you know, coffee stained and old looking paper. And then you just have to print them. And as I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, I um, I just, I don't know how I've never thought of this before. I mean, I've opened Word documents before in my past life, you know, a while ago and put a bunch of pictures that I had somewhere and resized them to fit one eight and a half by 11 page, right? I just did the same with the JPEG of my papers. And then I have a whole big digital page now reduced to a very small size that I can work with. It's lovely and, oh, I like it right there on top, like with the flowers. Love it. Um, yeah, so these are usually bigger, but now they're smaller. I'm loving this idea and I can print all of my pages. Like I could put, um, my papers are landscape usually, so I could put two pages landscape on a eight and a half by 11 in Google Docs or in Word and then make mini journals with them. And I don't lose any of the beautiful image that I love so much. Instead of cutting out in the big page, like oh, this is like a discovery for me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sometimes when I hear myself, I realize that age is, age is, is creeping and um, I, <laughs> I, lose, I lose sight of, I don't know, like kids probably all know how to do this. Which is uh, reminding me to tell you that if, if you don't know how to do what I'm talking about, ask if you have a grandchild, just ask them, they know everything. <laughs> I don't have a grandchild, I have an 11 year old and, um, oh I like that, oh it fits perfectly. This is Kelly's Crafts, I think, this, this field label and I just stamped on it. And I think it would look lovely right here. Um, hmm. And like so, with maybe a tiny bit of this underneath. Like so. Like this. And this also becomes a little tuck spot for little things. Oh, let's do that. You know me. Add some more. Yeah, so I just um, I just stamped on this ticket, if you will, this field note ticket. I think it's Kelly's Craft. I'm not sure. Okay. There we go. I actually just um, I think her name was Isabel, and she asked me if I could make like a book of spells paper. Um, book of spells slash, you know, uh, book of shadows, you know, something like that. And yes, of course I could, but I'm realizing I don't have a whole lot of time. I have way too many projects on the go. And like I've mentioned, I think in this video, because this is the next day, remember, <laughs> you don't know. Um, I have so many things that I make in the videos like this. This is going to go in my stash of things that are made and need to be sold. And uh, I don't have time to take pictures and post them on Etsy. And so when she suggested to make those papers, I was really excited about the idea. But then I realized, you know what? I have no time. But Kelly from Kelly's Craft, she makes these types of papers like Gothic and darker and she's really good at it so I told Isabel to go check her out see I don't mind going you know telling people people where to get other people's papers you know like we're all in it uh, we're all trying our best and it's okay that I refer people I would like someone to say oh you know what Chantal makes these types of paper I think you would like there's enough space for everyone. Well, that's what I think anyways. There. I think this is nice. What do you think? I think this is lovely. I think we did good. Yes, even with my... <laughs> oh my God. My stitching. Like I said, this 
it's not really my fault I mean I did break the thread quite a few times and this is my fault and the thread did not break <laughs> this is me learning how to how to sew on paper but yeah this this is not this is really the thread kept breaking and I was getting nervous I was trying to hurry up so and there it is my friends this was a longer video than I intended but it's for a good cause I did you know show you how I made this I really love this I love 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 these tags let me back up a tiny bit I love these tags I think oh I didn't realize that I also made a well the same kind oh and the same stamp <laughs> okay and oh my goodness you know what I love it they're the same type but they're different of course they're different sizes and they can go in different um journals i love them i think we did good i hope you enjoyed this crafting session with all the chit chat um like i said for you it's one video but for me it was last night to this morning and um again thank you so much for watching thank you for all of you who purchased my papers um it's not only about purchasing digital papers but when you do so you do help my channel grow because it's a tiny revenue i mean it's not a lot it's three dollars and some cents per pack of papers i will have soon to put my prices a little higher i apologize for that in advance but ink is costing me a lot of money and when i make these papers i have to see what they will look like when i i print them and so I print a lot and ink is extremely expensive. I would like to have the Epson Echo Tank, but it's, it, it is an expensive machine. Um, I would love to purchase it because I must spend so much money in ink that the machine would be bought, but you know, <laughs> so, um, all that to be, to, to say that I will probably, my next few kits will go a little higher in prices and Etsy is taking more money now so um all that being said when you do purchase my digital papers you are helping me financially um you know sometimes you'll buy three or four sets of papers that's you know nine or twelve dollars you know trickling down in my account slowly but surely same things with watching the commercials or at least letting them roll on youtube that's how we get paid again it's like i don't even think i've made 103 months yet because I don't have thousands and thousands of subscribers. So when whenever you do those things or purchase from a link that I posted in my description box or share my videos so that they get more subscribers, all of this, all of these little little gestures here and there help in the long run. It's all about the long time vision for my channel. Same thing if you decide to send me uh, an item from my wish list. It's something that I won't have to purchase um, to keep creating with things, right? So, um, like, I, I'm not, I'm starting to, to say these things more, uh, as you may have noticed in the last few videos, because I've been in this for over a year now, and I can see myself do this for the long run, and I want to keep creating, but I can't do it uh, at my own expense, if you will, like money-wise, all the time. Um, because I want to show you new things and I want to test new uh, items so that's how I manage to keep going so I hope you understand I'm sorry for the long talk at the end of the video <laughs> maybe you already left I don't know <laughs> I do want to thank you for being here I want to hug you I give you a big big hug from here Nova Scotia Canada and as usual I hope you are all happy healthy and safe Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>